but um, a couple of things. Right now, I am not the um, I'm not the moderator for this. Um, not Tan in the office of Torah. It's, I think that that basically covers the, the the issues. If there are any questions, as I said, please don't hesitate, and we'll try to do it with this uh, with this uh, technology. And as we move along, hopefully, when this is all over, we'll still remember how to give a sheer face to face. Though, not promising anything. Okay. So with that in mind, let's uh, take a look at the topic of the shear. I saw in the memos the uh, question of giving a Zoom Seder. Um, that came up on, in the headlines yesterday. Um, I have what to say about it, but I'm not going to say about it, anything about it today. Um, maybe at some other time we'll, we'll uh, discuss that. But I do want to discuss the, the Seder here um, in terms of the imagery of the matzah on the Leil HaSeder. Um, and as what I hope that we'll see as we go along, that the, um, the imagery of the matzah is something which um, is, uh, is not, I wouldn't necessarily call it complicated, but it's certainly um, complex and multivaried. And the, um, this gives us a different sense of what we're doing when we're eating the matzah on Leil HaSeder. Um, I'm going to talk about four or five different variations, and they're all primarily within the, if you will, the halachic side of things, not even within the agadic side, though, of course, the question of the machshava, of the philosophy behind the mitzvah, um, is going to play an important role, as we will see. But as by means of introduction, I want to take a pasuk that we're all familiar with from um, the end of Parshat Bo, but it's a pasuk that we're familiar with because it is the um, part of the, the Haggadah, specifically the answer of the, um, the person who is running the Seder to the son who is the Rasha, um, the evil son. And I'll use my cursor a little bit so you can follow along. I hope everyone, if you can't see the screen, please send Natan a, a message right away because I'm going to be using the Makarot on your screen, um, and it's important that, uh, in order of the shear, of course, you've printed out the Makarot that were sent, you can follow along uh, there as well. And the first uh, source here, V'higata levincha bayom ahu leimor, ba'avur ze asa Hashem li b'tseitim imitzrayim. And I'm going to take the um, translation as it appears in the JPS, and you shall explain to your son on that day, it is because of what the Lord did for me when I went free from Egypt. Well, if you take a look at that pasuk, this is actually, this translation is following the understanding of the great Spanish grammarian, Rabiona Ibn Janach from the um, 10th century. Um, and he's quoted by the Ibn Ezra in his commentary. Basically what Ibn Janach says is, Perush ba'avur zeh. If you take a look at the pasuk, the pasuk is really, flipped. The way that we normally understand it is what we're telling the son, um, that it's be, why are we doing this avodah, right? The avodah hazot lachem. Why are you doing this avodah? So we answer, it is because of this, of this being taken out of the, um, what the, what Hashem did for me. We went out of Egypt and as a result, we are um, keeping these various mitzvot, we are doing this seder that we are so familiar with. Um, the problem is, is that the pasuk doesn't read that way. The pasuk really reads, Ba'avur zeh, because of this, Asa Hashem li mitzrayim, because of what I'm doing, that's why God took me out of Egypt. If you're taking a look at it literally, Ba'avur zeh, because of this, Asa Hashem li mitzrayim, this is why God did this for me in um, in Egypt, so the pasuk is the um, is here is a something which is uh, seems to be flipped and um, the Ibn Ezra so uh, quotes Rav Marinos that's his uh, Latin name uh, Marwan was his um, Arabic name um, so but, but we know him as Ibn Janach. Ba'avur 
So basically, he says the way that you're supposed to be reading it is because of all of the things that um, God did for me, I'm doing the Seder. And he brought many examples of this phenomena in Tanakh, where the, uh, the syntax is flipped. But really, the, the intent is that in this particular case is that because of what God did to me, we are doing the Seder the way that the JPS translates it, the way that we understood it in the Seder. I would, I would uh, argue that if not 100% of the participants right now, um, uh, certainly 99% of them, I don't know how you get to 99% when you have 40 participants, but that's, that's your problem. But anyway, most of you would have said that's exactly what uh, the way we've always understood it. However, the Ibn Ezra says absolutely not. Right? None of the examples that Ibn Janakh brings, which he doesn't bring here, but he, the, um, none of the examples are correct. Ki eich nahafoch, a beautiful idea. Eich nahafoch divrei Elohim chayim. How? can we possibly flip the and reverse the words of the living God? So he says the following, Tam ha-pasuk hefech machshavto. So the, underst- the proper, correct understanding of the pasuk is the exact opposite of the way that Ibn Janach says it. Ki ein ze, ein anachnu ochlim mit matzot ba'avur ze. We're not eating the matzot because God took us out of Egypt. Rak perush ba'avur ze ba'avur zot ha'avoda shuhu achilat ha'matza v'lo ye'achel chametz because of this service to God, namely the eating of the matza and the refraining from chametz, shuhu tchilat ha'mitzvot shetziva lanu Hashem, which is the very amongst the first mitzvot that God has commanded us. It is because of this that God made the miracles for us. In other words, and now I'll take a look at the English side of it. This translation is basically mine. Um, in other words, Hashem only took B'nai Yisrael out of Egypt in order that they should serve Him, in keeping with the, with the Pasuk. That at the very beginning, because as you can see, it's Shmot, Perak, uh, uh, Perak Gimel, when Moshe is being spoken to at Har Sinai with the bush, and here the pasuk says, "Asher tzeti etchem me'eretz Mitzrayim liot lochem leElohim." This is, excuse me, that's the wrong pasuk. Kakatu baltziacha et ha'am Mitzrayim tavdun et Elohim al Har Azeh. When you will, when you take this people out of Egypt, so you will worship God on this mountain. That is the purpose. So the purpose, it's. So basically, Ibn Ezra says, so what God is saying is just the opposite of what we normally think. It's not that we're eating the matzah because we were freed. Rather, we were freed in order to allow us to do the mitzvot. That the mitzvot have this, if you will, um, this deep spiritual purpose, this deep spiritual goal, which is the, which in effect becomes the rationale for the historical process. This is a, um, uh, I saw a similar idea quoted in the name of the, um, in the name of the, uh, the Beit HaLevi, the uh, Rav Yosef uh, Dov, uh, Rav Yosef Ber Soloveitchik, the great grandfather of, uh, of, of Rav Soloveitchik. Um, but the, you know, it's a, but here it's the Ibn Ezra saying it, that basically the purpose of the Yitziat Mitzrayim is to allow us to do the mitzvot. So, and here specifically with regard to the achilat matzah. So if that is the case, and even if it's not the case, even if we take the more conventional understanding of the Ibn Janach, um, albeit the difficulty that occurs in the reading of the psukim because of it, um, it really behooves us to try to have a, a deeper understanding of what we are accomplishing by eating the matzah. And here I want to take a look at the, the psukim, at least some of the psukim that are brought in the Torah, um, and see how they lead to different, um, different approaches, um, which are parallel, 
uh, some of them may be, I wouldn't say that, that they're in contradiction to one another. I think that they're in parallel, but they add layers of depth to understanding our experience at Leil HaSeder. So let's start with the, the very beginning. Um, Perak Yudbet, here's source number three. This is within the context of the command that Moshe receives um, today, actually. HaChodesh HaZeh Lachem Rosh Chodashim, that the, this month, this month of Nisan is the beginning. Presumably, God spoke to him on Rosh Chodesh, or immediately before Rosh Chodesh, um, and gave him the commands um, for the um, for the subsequent uh, uh, two weeks, which were going to culminate at uh, Leil HaSeder, um, at that night of the first Korban Pesach. Um, by the way, this might be, this is a, excuse me, this might be the understanding why the, in the Haggadah, we say, Yachol Me Rosh Chodesh, this is just parenthetic to what we're talking about, but the, um, where the, the, the Baal Haggadah brings the idea, Yachol Me Rosh Chodesh, Tamud Lomar, um, by Yomahu. So the, um, why would I have thought that you should say the uh, Haggadah um, on starting from Rosh Chodesh? Why would we have that, you know, wh- where would we have that Hava Mina? Why would I even think that that's a possibility? After all, it's Chag HaPesach. So the answer, I believe, is, is that the, here you have this notion that Chag HaPesach really begins with HaChodesh HaZeh Lachem, because this is when the command was given. So I might think that I should already be beginning, be beginning to have this discussion that we're familiar with from that time. Okay, but, the, um, but within that context, when we reach the, the nitty gritty of that first Leil HaSeder, when we're supposed to take, they were in Egypt supposed to take the sheep, and they were supposed to slaughter it, put the blood on the, the doorposts, etc. And the Torah says, V'achlu basar balayla hazeh, tzli'esh umatzot, al mirorim yochluhu. Right? Eat the flesh that is roasted with the matzot, with the unleavened bread, and the bitter herbs, you shall eat it. Now, the, um, the, the obvious question is, why should you be eating with matzah? The maror, we under, might understand, is the, has the idea, the, the familiarity that we have with the notion of the... Um, the, the bitterness of the Egyptian experience. But what is the matzot? Um, we're going to be saying a little bit later, the Torah will say in Pasuk Lametet of Perak Yudbet, um, when describing the actual Exodus, Vayafu et habatzek, asher hotziu mimitzrayim ugot matzot, kilo chametz. They baked the dough in an unleavened way, um, because it was not uh, chametz, ki garshumi mitzrayim, they were uh, they were chased from Egypt. The lo yachluli mamea begam tzeda lo asulahem, and they weren't able to um, pause, um, and they had not prepared any. Well, this is the old JPS um, translation. Prepared any victuals. Now the. Um, that happens afterwards. In other words, that's the following morning. Why, in the um, you know, why are we or were they already eating the korban pesach with matzot? If only in the following morning did their dough not rise, right? That's the you know an obvious question. The night of pesach, they should have been able to to eat it with with whatever, with, with rolls and what have you. Why are they only eating it? Why were they already told to be eating it with matzah if that was only going to historically occur um, a, a few hours later? Um, this, by the way, touches on I've, 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 the, the, the greatest miracle, to my mind, of Yitziat Mitzrayim, was that you know, the, the, that morning, you know, they're, they're leaving. And two million or so Jewish mothers and grandmothers, and no one prepared a sandwich. You know, the, uh, how is it that they left with the dough um, and they, nobody had thought, well, if we're leaving the following morning, maybe, just maybe, we should prepare something in advance. Right? 
I, I'm going to leave that question in the air for the moment, but I think we should come back to it. You know, I'm saying it tongue in cheek, but I think that it's a, a, a serious question that needs to be a, a addressed. Really, why didn't they prepare? Why didn't they know that they were going out and that they had to have food? Why did they, why were they suddenly so harried to go out? But the, the question that needs to be addressed first is this idea of Sli'esh umatzot amorim yachluhu. And then God continues and says, this is how you're going to eat the Korban Pesach. You're going to eat it harried, the chipazon Pesach Hashem, And that's a play on words. The chipazon and the Pesach is a, a flip of those two words. Whereas you're going to be eating this in a harried manner. Um, and the and God tells Moshe that he's going to be killing the um, he's going to be killing the firstborn. He's going to uh, pass over our homes. And pasuk yudalid haya hayom azel lachem lezikaron v'chagotem otol chag. And this day, presumably the day of the fourteenth, not the day of the fifteenth, is going to be a chag for you for all generations, when I say that the, the day of the 14th, the day that they brought the Korban Pesach, they would eat it the night between the 14th and the 15th. I'm not going to get too much into that right now because that will take us too far afield with regard to Pesach as opposed to Matzah. But afterwards, Shivat Yamim Matzot Tochelu. Okay, but on seven days, you're going to be eating the, um, the Matzot and again, the matzot are being spoken about without the historical reference. This all is all of these psukim. I want to stress this, right? Pasuk chet through pasuk tet vav here. This is before they have even taken the sheep and put it aside. Only in pasuk chaf aleph, which I did not bring here, and I apologize for that. I should have, but only starting in pasuk chaf aleph. Does Moshe tell, if, you tell, if later on if you have a chance, take a look in your, um, in your Chumashim, Perak Yud Bet, Pasuk Chaf Aleph, and onwards. That's where Moshe speaks to B'nai Yisrael um, and tells, him, them to, um, uh, tells them to be um, about the Korban Pesach. So why do we have these Matzot? Okay, so, there, so right now we have, we've already seen two different references to the Matzah. We've seen reference number one before they left Egypt, when they're told to eat it with the Korban Pesach. We see reference number two um, as based on their leaving the following morning. Um, they couldn't rest and therefore their, their dough did not rise. There's a third reference in, um, uh, there are other references as well, but in terms of the rationale, there's this third reference, Lo tochal alav chametz, shivat yamim tochal alav, alav matzot lechem oni, ki bichipazon yatsata me'eretz mitzrayim. So here we have a reference in Sefer Dvarim, bringing the Korban Pesach, and when you bring the Korban Pesach, you should not eat chametz with it for seven days, and you will only eat the matzot, and here the matzot are referred to as the lechem only, the bread of affliction, which we'll come back to. So these are your three references in the psukim. Now, um, because of the, uh, the slightly shortened shear, I'm going to skip the, uh, the fifth source right now, and I'm going to go to the Mishnah here, number six, the Mishnah in Psachim, um, in Perek Yud. The Mishnah says that um, it's a familiar Mishnah because it's quoted in the, in the Haggadah, but we're going to see that the, the way that the Mishnah is stress, is, speaks is not exactly the way that the Haggadah brings it. The Mishnah says the following, Rabban Gamliel Haya Omer, Ko shelo amar shlosha dvarim elu bepesach, lo yatsa yidei chavata, ve'elu hen, pesach matza umaror, so the three um, uh, mitzvot, whoever does not mention these three things, does not, did not fulfill his obligation, which obligation we will see in a moment, but what are they? Pesach, Matzah, and Maror. And then the, 
Bishnah says what we have to say. Pesach, al shum shepasach hamakom al batei avotenu b'mitzrayim. The reason why we're eating the Korban Pesach is because God passed over our father's homes in Egypt. Matzah, al shum shenigalu avotenu b'mitzrayim. Because our forefathers were redeemed in Egypt. Now, it's been a, a year since we read the Haggadah. I want to go down to what the Haggadah says. Number 10. Matzah zu sha'anu ochlim al shuma, al shum shelo hispik pitzeikam shel avoteinu lachmitz, ad shenigla alayhem melech malchei amlachim akadosh baruchu uga alam. Why do we eat the, but the matzah? Because their dough didn't rise until God took us out. And then he quotes the pasuk that we read before. So this idea, something's gone, something's gone awry. Because here in the Mishnah, it just simply says, because our fathers were redeemed in Egypt. And now in the Haggadah, when we're quoting that Mishnah, we say it's because their dough did not have a chance to rise. That's why we're saying it. That's the, the issue. So if that's the case, right, why is that? The, um, you know, why did we change from the Mishnah? So I think the answer is, um, is, is, is the following. One of the th- primary themes of the matzah, right? We're saying, as I said at the, be- the, the beginning, there are different themes to matzah. One primary theme of matzah is the accoutrement, the accompaniment to the Korban Pesach. In other words, independent of the fact, let's say they had never left right, um, Egypt in the way that they did. Now one could say that this is, of course, a that the halacha precedes the history, and maybe that gets back to that Ibn Ezra that I said earlier, but if even had they not left Egypt the way they, they did, the Torah is telling us to eat the Korban Pesach together with the matzah. That eating with the matzah is, um, is the idea that the matzah is, a, um, is basically a, um, an accompaniment to the Korban Pesach. Some of the Rishonim, for example, and the Mepharshim point out that a other korbanot also have bread. If we take the most uh, um, the, the most obvious uh, ref, uh, the uh, most obvious comparison would be to the korban toda, to the um, Thanksgiving offering, and korban pesach might be a form of a Thanksgiving offering. So the um, a, th- a Thanksgiving offering is brought with loaves of bread. In fact, forty loaves of bread. Um, four different types of bread. Three of those types are matzah. Ten, one of the types is chametz. But there is bread which is associated uh, that you're eating together with your korban. So similarly, one might argue that what you are doing is you are eating the bread of the, um, of the korban pesach. And the bread of the korban pesach is matzah. Now, we still have to ask, why should it be matzah as opposed to other forms of bread? But, and maybe we'll get back to that um, in, in a little bit. But right now, I want to just focus on it being the bread of the korban and how that impacts on the halacha. The way that it primarily impacts on the halacha is in, in the following way. The, um, we're familiar with the, the following line of the Mishnah, because it's again quoted in the Haggadah, in our answer to the Chacham, our answer to the wise son, we say, Ein maftirin achar pesach afi koman. And there's a, the, the way that, Ein maftirin achar pesach afi koman, we do not eat anything after that, the Korban Pesach. It's also, Ein maftirin achar, the way that the Rashbam here quotes it, Ein maftirin achar Right? In our Seder today, when we don't have the Korban Pesach, who knows, Bezrat Hashem, maybe in two weeks' time we will have the Korban Pesach again. Um, there'll be a little irony, I guess, 
the, the, the Beit HaMikdash will be rebuilt, but we'll all be in quarantine and we won't be able to go. But, okay. Anyway, Ein Maftirin Achara Matzah Afikoman. So we don't eat anything after the Afikoman. We're all familiar with that halacha. And the Rashbam says the following in his commentary to the Gemara in Psachim. Tzarich le'echol matzah b'gmar sudato. Today, we must eat the matzah at the end of the meal, at the end of the Seder. Zecher le'matzah ha'nechelet im ha'pesach b'kricha. As a remembrance of the matzah that was eaten together in a sandwich, together with the Korban Pesach. Now, the Korban Pesach, the, the Hillel sandwich that we have korech for, um, was probably the way most people ate the Korban Pesach, whether they had to halachically or not, the way to eat a Korban Pesach was to eat it as a lafa. I mean, you would take it, you would, it, was, uh, it was basically shawarma. You would cut your meat, you would put it into your pita, um, a lafa-like pita. You'd have your maror, which was your harif. I guess if you were temani, you added more maror. And you wrapped it up and you ate it together. Bizohi matzah bitsua. And this is the broken piece of matzah, matzah bitsua, the broken matzah that anu achlin ba'achrona l'shem chova. When we eat the that half of matzah that that was hidden at the beginning of the seder, and we eat it for the afi koman, that according to uh, the Rashbam, and according to one of the, this is a primary opinion amongst the Rishonim and Thrut Lahalacha as well. This is the real kiyum ha-mitzvah of matzah. We, we eat a lot of matzah in the Seder. We start with motzi matzah, then we go and we eat korech, maybe we eat a little matzah in shulchan orech during the meal, and then we eat more matzah at the afikoman. The Rashbam's understanding is that the mitzvah of achilat matzah is really being fulfilled at the very end with the Afi Koman, because that was the matzah that was eaten with the Korban Pesach. And since we go back to that very first Pasuk, Al Matzot Umarim Yochluhu, right? That is what we were doing. Matzot Umarim Yochluhu. This is where we were supposed to be eating the matzah in the first place. We were going to be eating it together with the Korban Pesach. Today, even though we're not eating with the Korban Pesach, during the, in the Beit HaMikdash, when they were eating it with the Korban Pesach, it was understood that that was the primary matzah. Today, that still remains the primary matzah. He has a problem. He says, well, if that's the case, why do we make the bracha at the beginning? So he says that is because we have no choice. Once we're eating the matzah, we have to make a bracha. But the, um, and we eat the matzah at the beginning of the meal. But uh, because all of our meals start with bread. But the real kiyum ha-mitzvah of achilat matzah is focused on the matzah of the korban pesach. That is the um, the way that the Rashbam understands it. The Rosh, and this is the other uh, uh, Deya, says that no. Um, the Ota Matzah Eina L'Shem Chova. He says th- this Matzah is not the, um, is not Chova. Okay? This is not the, um, the uh, this is not being used for the obligation. Right? This is not the obligation um, that we're referring to, um, because after all, we've already been eating matzah all night. Um, however, it's zecher le pesach. He says that it's not zecher to the matzah of pesach, but it's zecher of the pesach. Um, so this is a two conflicting ways of understanding it. Either way, you're saying that the matzah has even in our Seder, hasn't totally lost the, the Pesach aspect of it. But the primary focus, according to the Rush, is no longer on the Korban Pesach. According to the Rashbam, even today it remains on the Korban Pesach, 
which is why we fulfill the kiyum hachilat matzah, the obligation to eat matzah, really at the end of the Seder, more than at the beginning of the Seder. There are those who have the following, um, I don't know, we call it somewhere between minhag and halachic practice, to eat two different kizetin, two different uh, shirim of olive size uh, at the end of the Seder. Um, one, to fulfill the idea of the rush, that we're eating this korban, the, this matzah as a zecher to the korban Pesach itself, and the other to take the idea of the Rashbam, that we are eating a kezayit of the matzah. So to fulfill both of those ideas, you know, it's kind of difficult to be eating all that matzah. Everyone has to deal with their, you know, um, what their digestive tracts are going to allow them um, to, to have. You have to worry about digestive tract, tractates and digestive tracts. So here, in terms of that, to, to try to eat, <clears throat> excuse me, two kezetim of matzah, one zecher to the matzah and one zecher to korban pesach. But that's the theme of the idea of al matzot umorim yochluhu, that you're eating the matzah as a uh, part of the korban pesach uh, ceremony. Now, we're going to get back to, please hold in mind, why should we be eating the matzah with korban pesach? That still has to be um, addressed. Um, on perhaps on one level, as I said, it might just be the 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 bread which is eaten with korbanot in general, and this is the bread of korban pesach. Um, but perhaps there's more to it than that. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. Before we get to that, I want to discuss a major problem that occurs. The, um, you may be familiar with the following idea. And this is based on the Gemara in Psachim. The Gemara raised this. Amarava, matzah bizman hazed de'oraita, umaror de rabanan. Matzah today is de'oraita, but eating maror is only de rabanan. And the Gemara asks, maishna maror, why is maror any different? And the answer is al matzot umorim. It's interesting that the Gemara takes the pasuk from Pesach Sheni. I don't want to get into why right now, but the same idea that you are supposed to be eating the korban Pesach or the korban Pesach Sheni if you were to eat it um, a month later um, if, uh, uh, in ER, and you're supposed to be eating it with matzot umorim. So the Gemara says bizman de ika Pesach. Yesh maror. Uvizman de leka pesach, leka maror. So when there is a korban pesach, so then you have maror, and when there isn't a korban pesach, so then there is no maror. That's the, um, that's the way that uh, Rabbi uh, says it. However, if that's the case, why then the Gemara says matzah nabi? Why isn't matzah any different? Because after all, there is no, uh, it says, Amatzot umorim yochluhu. So here, the Gemara's response is, Matzah mehada harda beikra be'erev tochlu matzot. Matzah has a different pasuk, the pasuk of be'erev tochlu matzot, that you are supposed to be um, eating the, um, the matzah together with, not together with, that you have a chiv to eat the matzah independently of the korban Pesach. Maror, the, it never has that command being repeated. Matzah, um, it does. This is not the only opinion in the Gemara, though. The uh, Gemara quotes Rav Acha Yaakov, who says, Echad zeh ve echad zeh de Rabbanan. Both are de Rabbanan, because according to Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, we never left the uh, this idea that we've been speaking about throughout the shear of matzah being connected at the hip to the korban pesach, matzah is always, according to Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, a mitzvah of the korban pesach, and the maror is something which um, the uh, is also connected to the korban pesach. It's Rava, 
and we follow Rava's opinion, but Rava says that there is a specific mitzvah of eating matzah independent of the Korban Pesach. Now that is the, um, the idea, perhaps, that the Baal Haggadah says. Well, it's basically what the Baal Haggadah is doing by taking the very same Mishnah and changing it. When Rabban Gamliel said his original halacha, okay, let's go back to that. Rabban Gamliel lived during the time of the, um, during the, time of the Beit HaMikdash. Um, he also lived immediately afterwards, and according to uh, some historical records, this is a, a question, but it would seem that it's quite possible that the Korban Pesach um, will continue to be brought even after the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. Jews were still allowed to go up to Har Habayit, and there are those who want to claim that at least for 50, 60 years or so, after the destruction of the uh, Beit HaMikdash, they continued to bring the Korban Pesach. Regardless, Rabbi Gamliel was speaking about a reality where matzah was being eaten together with the Korban Pesach, and that's why matzah is just part of the Korban Pesach. Pesach, matzah, umaror. The three things that you eat together, and Pesach, al-shum shenigalu avotenu b'mitzrayim. That changes. That changes with the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. That changes with the, when we no longer have a chiyuv of matzah, a chiyuv of the Korban Pesach, and now we only have the chiyuv of matzah, and now we need a separate reason to be, to be eating the matzah. The separate reason is this flight to freedom that we are familiar with. Al shum shalohi hispik b'tzei kam shalavotenu lachmitz, because their dough didn't have a chance to rise. And the, this idea is something that the Nitziv, in his commentary, the Nitziv of um, uh, Rav Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, um, uh, Yudit Berlin uh, says in his commentary to Sefer uh, Dvarim, he says, Bizman Azet, today, I'll just read it in the English, the matzah recalls the haste, which is why we mention this element today and explains the deviance in the Haggadah from the terminology of the Mishnah. That is the dominant theme, right? Be it, and he says, whether it's the haste of the Egyptians at midnight or the haste of the Jews in the morning. This Basically, what used to be a secondary theme for the Haggadah, uh, for the Matzah, has become the primary theme. They're both mitzvot da'araita. If we were now at Leila Seder with the Korban Pesach, when we eat our Matzah, we're fulfilling two different requirements. We're eating the Korban, we're eating the Matzah as part of the Korban Pesach experience. And we're also eating it as part of the Geula experience of the following morning, or at midnight when the Egyptians, um, when the Egyptians um, uh, stopped, um, uh, were, uh, were, were awakened to find their firstborn being killed. And these are two separate ideas, two separate themes, two separate motifs, which we need to be understanding as we are um, eating our matzah. Um, the, uh, but what has happened is that what once was the primary, the Korban Pesach, has now become the secondary. And what was the secondary, the idea of Kebichi Pazon, and the theme that, going back to that argument amongst the Amoraim, Rav Acha Bar Yaakov says doesn't exist at all. He believes that the, there's only the Achilat Matzah together with the Korban Pesach. <clears throat> but we follow the opinion of Rava. So what once was the secondary theme has now become the primary theme, at least until the uh, Korban Pesach is uh, revived. At the most that we have of the original theme is this idea of the Afi Koman, which, at least according to one opinion in the Rishonim, is representative of matzah eaten with the Korban Pesach, which we still eat um, at the end of the Seder. Now, 
the um, um, I just got on. So everyone hear me? Continuing? Okay, we're still good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. So the um, there's now another theme. The other theme is the theme that we mentioned back um, in uh, Sefer Dvarim here in number four, that it is lechem oni, right? The the bread of affliction, as we are familiar with. Now that bread of affliction is something that we introduce our Haggadah with, right? We say, halach ma'anya, this is the bread of affliction, the achalu avotana ba'ara de Mitzrayim, that our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt, kol dichvin yete v'yechol, so whoever is hungry should come and eat. We're all familiar with this. Now, this theme of oni, of affliction, we're going to see what the Gemara does with it, but on a, <clears throat> on, a, uh, of, on a shot level of the pasuk, of the, this bread of affliction, now this becomes a, it's, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that we introduce our Seder, our Haggadah, with this particular text, this Aramaic text, which seems to be written outside of Eretz Yisrael, we say at the end of it, Hashata Hacha Lishana Haba Ba'ara Di Yisrael, right? This year, now, we are here in the uh, diaspora, Lishana Haba'a, next year, in the land of Israel. That is a, um, something which becomes the, I don't know, the primary theme, but it becomes the opening to our Haggadah. And the opening of the Haggadah is the Achalu Avatana Ba'ara de Mitzrayim. It's not the matzah that we ate with the Korban Pesach. It's not the matzah that we are eating as we are leaving Egypt. It's the matzah that they ate while they were in Egypt. Now, perhaps, I'll just read this um, Avu Dram. The Avu Dram is a... Um, a 14th century um, Spanish uh, commentator, um, both halachicist as well as he wrote an important commentary to the Haggadah. And in his commentary to the Haggadah on this portion of Halach Ma'anya, he says the following. Um, the translation is mine for the most part. If you ask, why do we speak of the bread that our fathers ate in Egypt? Right? Why mention that at all? So, after all, their dough baked only after they left. So he quotes this Rav Yosef HaEzovi B'Shem Ben Ezra. And this Ben Ezra had been imprisoned in India. Hayashavui Bahodu. He had been imprisoned in India. V'hayu ma'achilinoto lechem matzah v'lo natnulo la'olam chametz. So the rations that he received in prison were matzah, right? Now, we can appreciate why that is our prison rations. We sort of can understand there are... Now, he's going to give an explanation why. There, you could give a lot of reasons why um, in prison they would give uh, uh, prisoners um, uh, matzah. It stores better. It doesn't become as stale as quickly. His, uh, his um, rationale is the following. The matzah rationale of his captors was that the matzah was hard and does not digest as easily as chametz. As a result, ne- less is necessary to feed the victims. In other words, when you have your prisoners and you want to do it efficiently and economically, you give them this hard bread, which is hard to digest, but is filling. And you, as a result, you don't have to nearly produce nearly as much bread as you would if you were, if you were giving a, um, a, a chametz bread out. Um, I recently read, meaning within the last few years, um, 12 Years a Slave, which is a, um, uh, a memoir of a, um, a free, um, free African American um, who was kidnapped and spent 12 years as a slave. 
um, and it was later made into a movie as well. So it's a it's a really a harrowing tale of what he writes. But one of the things that he, that caught my mind when I was reading it was that the standard rations um, on the plantations that he was uh, that he was enslaved on were a matzah type of uh, bread that were given to him on a regular basis because they would they would give it to him at the beginning of the week and that would be his ration for the entire week um and that was just from an economical perspective and an oppression perspective the the best way for the operators of the plantation to to feed their slaves so the matzah as a result could very well be the same idea. Um, if you take also another aspect that is, has been pointed out by different people, that the, the leavening process, the idea of chametz in general, was an Egyptian invention. And so basically, the leavened bread was the bread of the Egyptians. The unleavened bread, the matzah, was the bread of the slave. So here you have the lechem oni, and maybe, and let's now go back to the question of why are we eating the matzah at this, with the Korban Pesach before they even leave? And the answer might be that it's a lechem oni, that the matzah, the Korban, the Korban of freedom, is being wrapped, literally wrapped, in the symbol of the oppression of the matzah. And it's being eaten together with the symbol of the bitterness of the slavery, of the experience, of the maror. And basically what the, perhaps the message is, is that in this gu'ula, remember they're eating it for the first time before they've even left. And you're being told that you are being freed right now, but remember the context, remember the slavery, that with the gu'ula, you can never forget the slavery that God has redeemed you from. That becomes a symbol of redemption of itself when they leave. Now, I'm going to take this one step further and say that perhaps the um, idea that, and this is kind of radical, um, it's actually something that I heard just this year on a, a sheer on a podcast, which I never thought about before, um, the but um, uh, a the podcast is uh, psychology and halacha and in the parsha it's uh, on the uh, the Gush podcast feed Kesha. The idea was that perhaps the Jews never even knew that they were leaving the following morning. Right? I asked, like, how did the why didn't anyone prepare a sandwich? And the answer is, is that if you take a look, and I, I apologize, please take a look at these psukim um, after the shir. Uh, take a look at Perak Yud Bet in Sefer Shmot, uh, from psukim Chaf Aleph through Chaf uh, Chet, seven psukim, and you'll see the, when Moshe relays the order to Bnei Yisrael that they should be leaving Egypt, and they should be talk, preparing the Korban Pesach, he never mentions, he does not mention the Makat Bechorot. He doesn't tell them, he says, prepare the Korban Pesach, and God will protect you. But he never says that at midnight, the Egyptian firstborn are going to be killed. He never says, tomorrow morning you're going to leave. This leaving of Egypt, might have come as a surprise. They knew that they were about to leave. They expected to leave maybe the following day. They prepared their dough. They figured they'd leave around noon, right? They'd wake up in the morning, they'd bake their bread, and they'd leave. And suddenly, they're bechipazon. Suddenly, they're being chased out in the morning, and they don't have a time to prepare the bread. They prepared the dough in advance. They were going to bake it but they never had the chance to bake it and so would have to bake on their shoulders. And the rationale here is that, well, maybe the surprise has to be a surprise. They have to leave Bechipazon. That has to be the way that Pesach is, you can't tell people, be prepared 
to be surprised. You have to tell them, okay, you're going to be leaving, and then surprise, let's go, out, out, now, leave. That is the way that the, the, the story plays out, so that the geula re- basically reflects the lechem oni, and that now the very symbol of the, uh, of the oppression becomes the symbol of the geula. But this is already found in the pasuk of um, the uh, going back to the Haggadah of uh, the, the pasukim in Sefer Dvarim. Lo tochal alav chametz shivat yamim tochal alav matzot lechem oni. And now we have the ki bechipazon yatzata mi mitzrayim. Words the two themes are joined together. It's not only lechem oni. It's not only bechipazon. It's together. It is the lechem oni, it is the bread of affliction, but it also is the bread of the geulah. It's also the bread that you are eating as you leave Egypt. Now, this has halachic ramifications as well. What are the halachic ramifications of this idea, this third theme, right? Now, just to recap, we've had... um, Three themes for the matzah. One is the, um, the, the matzah as being part of the Korban Pesach. One is that, number two is that the matzah is the symbol of the flight of freedom. Number three is that the matzah is the bread of affliction, the lechem oni. And what we showed is that perhaps there is an overlay of these different themes and that they inform one another, but that they all leave their fingerprints on the way that we eat the matzah. The way that we eat the matzah on the, in terms of the, um, uh, the afikoman, that is the matzah of the Korban Pesach. The fact that we continue to have a chiyuv to eat the matzah, the oraita, a Torah chiyuv, to eat matzah, even though there is no Korban Pesach, that is the matzah of the flight of freedom. And then this theme, which now we're going to see some of the halachic ramifications, this theme of lechem oni, which might explain why there was the matzah with the korban Pesach in the first place, as well as understanding why it becomes a theme for the Jew, not only without a Beit HaMikdash, without a korban Pesach, but the Jew who is in himself enslaved in the diaspora, that he is still eating this lechem oni. He is feeling, on the one hand, he is where his forefathers were in Egypt and is expecting to be redeemed from that reality of the diaspora. So now, let's take a look, however, where on a halachic level, the lechem oni plays a role. The, um, the Gemara in Brachot, says the following, Amar of Papa, HaKol modim bePesach shemeniach prusa betoch shleima uvotzea. So everyone agrees, normally speaking, we have two, um, two chalot, let's say, on Shabbat. We have Lecha Mishnah. We have two chalot on Shabbat. We have two chalot on Yom Tov. What do we do on Pesach? So on Pesach, we don't have a, a whole loaf. We have a broken loaf. That is based on the pasuk of Lechem Oni. A, the bread of, here not affliction, but the bread of the, um, of the poor person. The, um, this idea, and I'm, because we started a little bit late, it's beginning to, um, uh, beginning to get late. There is a little bit more to add to this. But the, the primary theme is, if you think of the following way, we're going to take the, the let's take a look at the Rambam. The Rambam takes this idea quite literally, and he says the following. The Rambam Seder was a little bit different than ours. He says the following. So we're up to Rachza in our Seder, and you make the brachan al netilat yadaim, v'notel yadav shnia, and you wash your hands a second time. Why? We can't rely on the orchats, of the Haggadah, 
um, of the, the original, at the, the, the set right after Kiddush, because we've said the Haggadah in the meantime. So now we wash again. And then, Lokeach, the Rambam says, Shnei Rikikin. The Rambam only had two matzot at his seder. Lokeach Shnei Rikikin, V'cholek Echad Mehen. And you break one of them. Now, when you break one, right? So basically, the Rambam holds one and a half pieces of matzah in his hand and makes the bracha motzi lechem in ha'aretz. And then you make the bracha of hamotzi lechem in ha'aretz. Why? Mipnei ma eno mivarech al shtei kikarot kishar yamim tovim. So why don't we make the bracha with two full loaves like other yam tov? Shenemar lechem oni. Because it says the bread of affliction and the Gemara's explanation for that is mar dakoshel ani beprusa. The uh, a a poor person has a, uses a, um, a a broken piece. He doesn't have a whole loaf of bread. He only has a slice of bread. So that is the the theme that is going on here um, for the the Rambam. Um, this is the opinion of the Rambam, it's the opinion of the Rif, it's others that basically say, the briskers also, by the way, to this day, um, will use two matzot and not the three matzot that we're familiar with. The three matzot that we're familiar with um, is, comes from the following idea, that basically we try to combine these two different ideas. It's true that we have, I'm not going to read the Rashi inside, but basically this is, the idea that Rashi says, shleimot, you bring two whole matzot plus the broken piece. Now, the, we break the matzah not when the Rambam broke the matzah. The Rambam broke the matzah right before he ate the matzah. We break the matzah before we start the discussion of the Seder, before we start Magid, because we're going to use it in effect as a prop for the um, for the Seder itself. But what we're doing by having two and a half matzot when we make the bracha is we're sort of squaring the circle. On the one hand, we have two matzot because that is lechem mishnah. We also have half a matzah because that is lechem oni. So the, this custom of having a broken piece of matzah is because of this third theme that we've been talking about the theme of the bread of affliction, that it's important that this matzah itself reflect the, uh, the servitude and the poverty that we had in Egypt. Now, taking this lechem oni one step further is a midrash, or an agada, I should say, in the Gemara, play on the words. Amar Shmuel, number 17, the Gemara says the following. Amar Shmuel, lechem oniktiv, right? The, it's pronounced lechem oni, but it is written as lechem ani, right? The, it is, the translation doesn't really bring this across. This was a cut and paste translation. The, um, the, the pasuk, is written as an ani, but it's pronounced oni, and the, the drasha is the following, lechem she'onin alav dvarim, the bread that um, we read, that we recite things over. Right? The la'anot, to answer. So a play on the word of lechem oni, it's not the bread of affliction, now it's the bread of talking. I guess that's, you know, a good Jewish custom. You're afflicted, so you talk a lot, right? Jews know how to, Jews know how to talk, they know how to complain. So this is the idea of lechem she'onin alav dvarim, that we recite many things about it. Now, this might be the source of the, um, this idea, getting back to Rabban Gamliel, kol shelo amar Rabbi Gamliel had said, if you did not say these three things on Pesach, 
you did not fulfill your obligation. So I, which obligation did you not um, fulfill? It says you did not fulfill your obligation. Which obligation? The, um, that's a somewhat uh, open uh, to uh, understanding. There are really two possibilities. And not surprisingly, there's a machloket as to which of those two are we referring to. The Rambam says the following. The Rambam says that, These things are what we call the Haggadah. Meaning, the Rambam says that if you do not refer to the Haggadah, if you do not refer to the, excuse me, refer to the Matzah, you don't refer to the Pesach, you don't refer to the, um, to the Maror, you haven't fulfilled your mitzvah of, you haven't fulfilled your mitzvah of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim, telling the story. It's important, Rabban Gamliel says, that it's not just enough to talk. You have to use a, the, um, you have to use multimedia tools. Here we're using multimedia tools in terms of the video conference, but the multimedia tool of the, of the Seder is to use the matzah, it's to use the um, maror, it's to use the korban pesach itself and to describe what you are eating, what you're consuming, what you're holding in your hands, what you're pointing to. That is the full mitzvah of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim. That's the lechem sha'onim alav dvarim harbe that the Rambam is talking about. The Ramban goes in the other direction. The Ramban says that um, don't take the, this idea so, um, so literally that lo yatzai yidei chovato, that you did not fulfill your obligation, but what the, the Ramban raises the possibility, he rejects the possibility, but he says maybe it would mean that if you are, um, let's say I only eat matzah, and I never said matzah zo al shuma, why am I eating this korva, why am I eating this matzah? I never said it. So does that mean you didn't fulfill the chiyuv of matzah? So he says, no, you've fulfilled matzah, you just haven't done it in the best possible way. But the idea that the Ramban is saying is that the matzah is that you are fulfilling the, um, that the, the telling of the story completes the chiyuv of eating the matzah. It's not that, the, that using the matzah to fulfill the completion or to, the, the, of this telling of the story, it's telling the story so that I have a better appreciation of why I'm eating the matzah. So this all comes from the idea of lechem oni. So just to sum up, what we've seen here is, are four different ways, maybe even five different ways of understanding the notion of matzah and more importantly than the, just simply understanding different ways of matzah, they all leave their fingerprints. They all are reflected in the halacha. And what are they again? Is matzah a part of the Korban Pesach? And that's why we're eating the matzah, which is why we eat the afi koman. Number two is the idea of the matzah as being a theme of geula, of a flight of, to freedom, if you will. That is the matzah of the um, that's the matzah of the Seder without the Korban Pesach, where we still have a chiyuv of matzah today. Then we have the third theme of Lechem Oni, of the bread of affliction. And that theme of Lechem Oni, we saw, breaks down into three different directions. Some more based on Pshat, some more based on the Agadah, based on the Midrash. The three aspects of Lechem Oni is the, le- the bread of affliction, which is the halach ma'anya, reflecting what was done in the Seder itself, excuse me, in Mitzrayim itself with the Korban Pesach. 
and also takes on special importance for the Jew who finds himself in the diaspora in a reality where he has to imagine freedom because freedom is not something which he really has uh, with him. The second idea of lechem ani, of the poor person, the broken piece of matzah, which is what we use for our um, achilat matzah at the beginning of the Seder, either the two loaves that the Rambam had or the three loaves that we had, have today. And finally, the idea of lechem oni as being a primary tool to tell the story, either that we use it the way the Rambam understood it as being a prop for the um, for the Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim, or the way that the Ramban understood it, that we use the story to give more meaning and more depth to the matzah that we ate. Um, I hope that uh, all of you and all of us, in these difficult circumstances that we're living with today, however we're able to fulfill our mitzvot, so that we find the depth and the meaning in our achilat matzah, and in our Seder, um, and that everyone is able to stay well and healthy um, and should have, within the limitations of what we all are living through, a Chag Kasher V'Sameach. Really wonderful to see all of you, um, albeit virtually, and I look forward to being able to see you all in person again after all of this is over.